This is Nia Perry, founder and CEO of Gradient Global Collective, and you're listening to the Gradient Global Collective podcast. My dear listeners, I appreciate you all so much for tuning in again today. Today's guest is a force to reckon with, and she has so very graciously agreed to share her wisdom with us. I'm speaking, of course, of none other than Dion Phillips. Dion Phillips is a sought-after beauty entrepreneur and founder of The Lashes, the hottest luxury lash salon in Los Angeles, California. Known as the pioneer of eyelash extensions to Hollywood's A-list, Ow. <laughs> Dion has worked with mega stars, including Victoria Beckham, Naomi Campbell, Paris Hilton, Lindsay Lohan, Mary J. Blige, just to name a few. And we know those girls know how to slay and always look amazing. Um, an entrepreneur for 20 years, Dion and her professional Delashes team are more than capable of helping you feel worthy of any catwalk with your lashes. So welcome to the Gradient Global Collective podcast, Dion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for sprinkling a little bit of your fabulousness with us today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to kick this off with um, at the beginning, if you don't mind. So tell me. So you started D Lashes in 2005 with $65 in your kitchen. I love those kind of stories. So tell yes. us more about your humble start and how did you grow to become a pioneer in the beauty industry? Yes, well, originally I started uh, in 98, 1998, oh, really, okay. but officially with my business in 05 um, in Los Angeles. Okay. And um, I was always, you know, back and forth out here meeting my love, mm -hmm. um, and it kind of transpired into my business, nice. um, meeting people in elevators, at coffee shops, at the mm -hmm. gym, locker room. Um, you know, at, at Barry's boot camp, I remember Barry's boot camp, I was going to meeting people in the parking lot of different places and uh, one of the persons I came up upon was Miss Paris Hilton okay and just in um, the street just like out and about actually at a spa I okay. met her okay at a spa and then um the original one was Tweet remember Tweet <laughs> oh yeah Tweet. yeah, yeah, Tweet. yeah. Tweet. she was one of my original girls her and Brandy come into my kitchen oh get out um and they're like what are these lashes you know I was trying to slay before I was fly, before the word slay came around. Right, 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 right. <laughs> um, so is fly old? Because I still use it. Is that bad? <laughs> I still use fly. I, I don't know. We, we all make it new again. Exactly. How about that? <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> so um, I, I met those beautiful, talented young ladies, mm -hmm. and um, they really believed in my product. Wow. And the lashes, I was like, come to my kitchen. You know, I can make these lashes stay on you know, for several weeks, they're like, what, what, you can do what? Right. They never heard of it before. No one ever heard of it before yeah. anywhere. Okay. And um, one client, basically, I just thought I just put them on because I wanted to be cute. Mm -hmm. um, one client led to another and led to, you know, five a day, then eight a day, and then wow. up to a six-month waiting list. Wow. So it was all because I wanted to be cute, and it kind of translated to other you know, other beautiful women who wanted to be cute too. Yeah. So that's wow. how that happened. So yeah. what was the 65, what was that initial investment for? Like what was that $65 for in the beginning? $65 was for the products that I wanted to purchase. So okay. I, tr you know, tried look, locating manufacturers, um, you know, to produce the product. Before I was just cutting up little strip lashes yeah. and buying individual, they, they still sell individual single lashes on a tray okay. and I was doing that at first and um, I just thought $65 from the initial investment of my product that I bought and the time I was putting in it didn't mm -hmm. take me that long to put them on mm -hmm. and I came up with that that price point wow. for those clients from my kitchen at that time and plus oh, okay. it was an enticement to get people to my kitchen for me to actually apply them so yeah. that that gave me the yes factor to a lot of people who wanted to try the eyelashes. Oh, man, that's neat. Wow. Yeah. 
So yeah. You, so so how did so what was the first? Yes, I know you said Brandy and Tweet were um, some of your first client, but like how did you secure the first yes? Were you just um, in that circle? How did you come to know them and and then just kind of convince them that you know you had they had to try your product? Well, I again I, I come from the modeling world and, okay. and television, so at every audition I was at. Mm-hmm. At, after a while, I kind of got over, you know, chasing the audition. So basically what I did was every new person I came, up, I came in contact with before 5 o'clock, I would give them my card, either be in the elevator, either be in, you know, um, in line at the valet, right. wherever it was. So I would just talk to people. They, they kind of liked what I was wearing at the time before mm-hmm. social media. Um, you kind of had word of mouth mm-hmm. sort of things going on so they would tell their friends they would tell their friends so i'm a new yorker and out here in los angeles people where are you from what part of new york i'm midtown manhattan get out i'm from brooklyn yes are you really (laughs) i am yes i love that cool yes exactly (laughs) you said brooklyn exactly we're brooklyn exactly (laughs) i love that you poster so we we love sharing you know we come from italian kind of atmosphere of mm. like you, you need anybody you need anything to take care of you that's how I kind of think okay. you know okay I take care of the next person and I want you know if I'm actually lashing out people I want my girls to look fly of cute course. play right. Right. you know right so they told their friends and and it kind of you know did a domino effect of you know every three, three persons that you tell mm. I will take care of you and give you a complimentary session so that oh, kind of helped me build a lot of yeses yeah so yeah. Okay, that's smart. That's a good strategy for someone just kind of starting out, that referral-based um, service. That's awesome. Yeah, really good idea. referral-based. It's, it's key because a lot of times, you know, small businesses don't have the budgets for the big marketing, advertising right. um, ways of doing things. So you got to come up with strategies. It's mainly for business to help your business grow. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. I like that tip. So, Dion, you know um, – as being an entrepreneur, that the security of having that, you know, relatively guaranteed paycheck every other week is, you know, is non-existent as an entrepreneur. Um, (laughs) Were there specific fears or that you had or still have, right, about entrepreneurship and and what were and are they if you still have some of those fears? Fears, you said? Yes. Fears I would have. Mm -hmm. um, I try not, of course, you have fears of not having enough. Yeah. Or getting enough. Okay. So I, I instilled in me, like, I always have enough. If there's people around, I will have enough. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it starts with the thought process. Mm-hmm. You know, I tried to, you know, I really worked on having the process of, you know, having enough. So I, my fear is at the, at the beginning was getting money, you know, getting money to grow my business. Mm-hmm. Everyone, as you grow up, and especially in our community of African Americans, we always think we have to get a loan or or have some investment. Mm-hmm. I wanted to invest in myself mm-hmm. first yeah. before I knew I can get that investment back to people who ever invested in me. So right. I wanted to invest in myself first. So every client that I had, literally, for my $65, I would save half. Put okay. it, uh, half away so I can grow my business. Okay. And that fear kind of dissipated over time of me not having enough. Wow. So I literally saved half or I saved a full week of, of what I would make, you know, so I would I could dissipate that fear. And and now today I don't have that fear right. anymore. Yeah, I just have to find the resource now. Um, there's always a better resource of finding what you need within sure. your business. Hmm. That's good. Okay, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Interesting. So tell yeah. me, tell me three things. You've come such a long way. Um, and it, you know, it's been quite a. Anybody who can who has been an entrepreneur, you know over two years has, you know, has, has really figured some things out, right? We're never going to know everything, yeah. but we, <laughs> we figured, can't know everything. right. But we figured some things out. So <laughs> what would you t- tell me three things you would tell 2005 Dion about the entrepreneurial journey, uh, journey you've been on all this time? The, oh my gosh. Three things yeah. that I've been on my journey. I've been on, I would say one building a team. <laughs> building a team and making sure their team is represent you well, mm. basically, mm-hmm. you know, um, it's really hard. There's so many, everyone's 
in the new business right now. Like we we come, Silicon Valley has expanded globally mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everyone has new business of you know with social media going on. Um, but I would say building your, a solid team that really represent who you are and and have your processes down, have your mm-hmm. process down of how your business works. Mm-hmm. Um, that I would say is another component of it besides building the team, having your process down when you do build your team. So they're doing exactly what you're doing that made you successful to actually build the team. So you have to show the team how you are doing it. If you're all over the place and you can't, you know, grasp a, you know, a hand on how to do things, figure it out. Okay, first, do I turn the light on when I come into my place? Mm-hmm. Do I put the squeezer down this way? Mm-hmm. Do I, you know, build your team that same exact way because you're going to build your own um, your own way of doing things hmm. and your team will, will grow with you. Um, I would say the third third thing is not being afraid of anything, really. You can't. I, mm-hmm. You don't have room for it. So when you asked me that earlier, yeah. now, you know, I, I don't, I have to think that I don't have time to be afraid. I just have to do it. Hello. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, that first phone call, you don't know how that first phone call is going to, going to take place. You know, right. of course, have your strategy in hand, but make that first phone call for whatever it is that you have going on in your business, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, and go for it. Yeah, I would just say go for it. I mean, it's, it's a, a lot of us are so afraid of doing something because we don't want to hear no. Mm-hmm. We don't want to, you know, we have old, old ways um, that maybe halted us in other areas. But when you're an entrepreneur, you cannot accept fear and no for an answer. You just got to go for it. Right. That's awesome. So it, yeah. let me let me circle back on one thing you said just now about processes. Is that something that you did early? that you would suggest to a small person, like a small entrepreneur early on, even if they don't have a team yet, because, yeah. you know, you're so used to doing, right? You, you just yeah. do everything because you have yeah. to do everything. <laughs> but like, yeah. do, was that something that you would say, you know, start planning that process early on so that when you do bring someone on, you have something to sort of hand them, if you will? What do you yes, because the most, yes, I would say process is so important that mm-hmm. you have your process in order. Some people are just, you know, I, I look at, for example, hairstylists. Mm-hmm. Hair, a lot of hairstylists everywhere, mm-hmm. they just kind of like, okay, I'm going to put this color on her and that's it. Mm-hmm. There's a process of putting that color on. Right. First, you got to clean it. First, mm-hmm. you have to, you know, make sure the edges are right or whatever mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. I'm not a hairdresser. Come on, edges. But, um, <laughs> yeah, come on, edges. <laughs> edges, right? right. <laughs> As you know. Uh-huh. I do. But there's a process. It's so important. Like, we... You know, a lot of entrepreneurs miss that process and can't figure out why they can't be successful Mm -hmm. in other parts of their business. Wow. If your process process is not tackled down and streamlined Mm. to exactly, you know, what to do. If somebody was in your place and they're on the the fifth step, you know exactly what that fifth step is. Wow. The process has to be in place so you could grow from that. Right. You know, or take something out that wasn't working and that, that one little thing could have made your business, you know, so successful right That's so um hmm. but the processes have to be streamlined and understood by you as an entrepreneur right. you know we know how to just go and just do things and right. entrepreneur is so it's so loosely said now mm. um you know really whatever your business represents just have your processes in order that's good. That's something that um, I actually gleaned something from that just now, too, because it's so, again, you're so used to doing and just making right. it happen that you yeah. know all those things. But then how do you scale? Right. How do you bring on a team and how do you help then tell someone else what to do? So it, I think that's so smart. And that is something I'm going to. Exactly. Actually, yeah. I'm going to implement. And, myself. I, and I will say in, enjoy that process because that's yeah. what a success is. People think the end result is a success, but enjoy the process. We hear that wow. sometimes loosely in songs or wherever people just saying it but it's really true like I love putting together a look mm. okay how am I going to look that I got to look at how the angle is I got to look at how she wears her hair I look at you know all those things take place within your process enjoy that process and don't look always for the end result of that's things good. you know yeah, everyone want to have the big storefront business or they want to be global and traveling mm-hmm. okay but what is your process of getting there right you know, are you making the phone call? Are you making sure your accountant um, got your your numbers in order? You know, mm-hmm. all these things take place. So um, enjoy the process. 
That's good, Dion. Thank you. On yeah. your Instagram account at D Lashes, someone recently <laughs> asked you, um, are you a real hustler? That was the question. Um, and to which you answer, don't hustle. Don't have to. If you're hustling, you're always hustling for the next thing. Expound on that because I think, you know, the word hustle <laughs> is, is thrown around so much now. Um, yeah. And I actually know what hustling is. <laughs> like, yeah. like it, and I'm sure you have to because in Hollywood, I'm sure you have to hustle to a degree to really yes. get yourself out there. And I understand that all too well myself. So <laughs> tell me, um, tell me what did you mean by you, that you don't have to hustle and that you'll always hustle for the next thing? What, what did you mean by that? Okay. What I meant, what I meant by hustling is actually we'll use the hustle as the inside voice. Okay. I don't even want to put that in my consciousness. Mm. So we use that as our process because that's what it is. Mm. So the definition of hustle is your process. What is your process of getting there? Okay. You know, because okay. <laughs> we okay. just said process. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I just think everyone has their own definition of hustling. Maybe it means um, something pretty to them. I don't know. Right. But the word for me, hustling, means like, oh, just getting by. You just. You're just making just enough. Right. You're just doing just enough or right. you're you're scrambling and, mm-hmm. you know, whatever the definition for hustling means to you, mm-hmm. maybe maybe that's the key word to get you going. I don't know. But mm-hmm. I don't like using that word because you'll always be hustling in everything you do and mm-hmm. just getting by. Mm-hmm. So why can't we just use a different word, whatever that word means, because it, it means something differently to everybody. Right. You know, right. You know, so maybe hustling works for some people, you know, but it right. doesn't really work for me. And no. I just think changing your mindset of how you think about doing things, mm-hmm. you will use a different definition. I think that word has just come easily because that's all a lot of people just definitely know is you, that word. You know, it's funny, like you both we're, we're New Yorkers. Right. And so. Right. You know, when I think of hustle, I think of Jay-Z. I think of, like, really yes. people who are out in the streets making it happen. <laughs> and the reason and why I say that I understand hustle is because early on, really early on, yeah. like, right, you know, kind of after I left my corporate position, I used to make handmade, uh, handmade jewelry um, at, some, at one point. And I would sell it, like, literally at work, like, out the trunk, if you will. <laughs> right, and, right. Um, and I did really well with it, right? So I'm like, okay. You know, when the business, when, 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 what I, when I left my corporate position and I wasn't getting traction in the business that I'd started at that time, I said, okay, I still have an inventory of jewelry. Mm-hmm. I know I have bills to pay. You know, how mm-hmm. do I actually make that happen? And I, and I got my sneakers on. I went out and I actually hustled up cash flow for to then reinvest in See? my new business. And that, and to me, like that is truly. I was literally in the street hustling to make it happen, you know, and I think, right. you know, so I understand what that real, like, I look at it as a literal <laughs> definition yes. of out getting it done and making it happen, you know, and I yes. think that the term, again, is so overused now yes. that, um, you know, it, there's a real, there's a real definition to it. And, you know, again, yeah. from New York, we see like, you know, you think of Jay-Z and these people who really made something hustle. out of nothing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Who really hustled. Yes, and then as I said, that means something to you because right. you have something that 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 you did within that word. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So that word brings up a point of reference for you. Yeah. What you did, you out of your, you know, you had to go out and knock on doors mm-hmm. and and you know, for me, I just I just use it as my process. This is what mm. I'm gonna have to do. Okay. You know. Right. You know, I may call it, you know, beast mode. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna go beast mode. Right. You know, true. whatever the definition means to you, make it true to you, but. At the same time, a part of it, consciously, unconsciously, mm-hmm. it means hustling. You're kind of always hustling. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't seem as legal. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my, 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 you know? my, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, my dad told me, I told him once, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just, you know, hustling and figuring out. He said, no. You don't hustle. You're not out here. <laughs> you don't you're not pushing anything <laughs> illegally like this. Not... Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so we, we want to make those words prettier. Right. And exactly. Prettier for our definition. But. You know, it could mean, like I said, it could mean so, uh, you know, like it's sincere to you and, mm-hmm. and true to you and who you are and what you did to get to the point of your success. Right. So, you right. know, use it. But I just, I just say take it out because it's so watered down now. Mm-hmm. You know, let's find another word that we could use that really means something and, and kind of spark something in our, in our hearts yeah. and passion right. to get us going. Awesome. Well, Deanna, yeah. on this show, we speak a lot about support 
or Mm -hmm. lack thereof, right, from those Mm -hmm. around you as an entrepreneur. Uh, What are your Mm -hmm. thoughts on having a supportive team? Do you feel like it's necessary or and and how important is it for you? um, uh, How important is it for an entrepreneur to surround themselves with one? Oh, my gosh. I think it's imperative to surround mm-hmm. yourself with other entrepreneurs. Okay. I think it's, I think it's necessary. It's, it's very, very important um, to surround yourself with other entrepreneurs because you feed off each other. And there's a mindset. I keep, I'm going to keep talking about mindset. But there's a mindset that um, helps you strive that you probably never had beyond that, you mm-hmm. know, or uh, before that, prior to that. So, if, you know, and it's accountability, you know, this accountability factor that happens too. Maybe they did something that you weren't familiar with, and they can, and they have been through it. Sure. And they can make sure that you're accountable for your actions that mm-hmm. you're about to put forward to make it successful for whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's so important to surround yourself with the team. Um, I literally go to I I create mastermind groups, and I go to oh. mastermind groups. Cool. Um, Mastermind groups are a group of people, entrepreneurs per se, mm-hmm. um, from different walks of industries, mm-hmm. and you feed off each other, you um, bring accountability to each other, and you learn. You continuously learn from from their mistakes and from their their um, wins, mm-hmm. say it that way, you know? Do, do you surround so. yourselves with people in the same sort of vertical as you in the beauty industry, or is it sort of across all? different types of entrepreneurial cross yeah cross okay cross and then i'm i'm really blessed to have clients from all different walks of industries and mm-hmm. i literally ask a lot of questions yeah. you know i don't pry but i ask questions i mean i'm meeting with executive women who make decisions and the the networks who are asking me an eyelash person who i who they would pick for the next movie you know wow. what i mean like right. i've been blessed with that type of atmosphere of these women who come from nothing you know yeah yeah. and and there's women who are I mean women and men Mm -hmm. I I I feel off men because men and women do things differently so I'm really right now I'm really intrigued with the techie guys Mm -hmm. right now and how they think okay about things yeah so I've been engulfing myself around a lot of techie guys nice lately because they think differently than we do and as even as an African-American woman they think differently, as, sure. you know, That's how we fair. do. Um, so I'm really intrigued with that, but I definitely surround myself with other like-minded hmm. um, individuals. Even I learn from people who are, who are still so green. Yeah. And, and I just listen because listening, you will learn so much hmm. from just listening and not always have to be the, the know-it-all. Right. You know, as an entrepreneur, even though, you know, you may feel or people may see you as this success, I'm constantly striving and, you know, I always tell entrepreneurs, don't, don't um, get cocky because, <laughs> you know, it could fall just as much. I just treat it as if it was new, like I'm just starting all the time. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you keep yeah. that, that same, do you feel like you have that same level of excitement as when you were first starting, do you think? Oh, yeah, even more now because um, now I know more. Now right. I know how to get something. Now I know, you know, we have, you know, Google, but I I can ask questions to the other entrepreneurs of how they did it. Right. You know, and I, I can get there faster, you know, and, and they appreciate that because people love giving their information, even though some think otherwise, but people love giving information. Hmm, that's good. You have to ask for it. That's good. So that sounds like the answer yeah. to sort of my next question here. So what advice would you, one of the answers I should say, what advice would you give to other entrepreneurs that, um, maybe want to tap into that highly competitive celebrity audience that you've been able to sort of navigate in, um, no matter what point of the part of the world they may may be in, like maybe a local celebrity in their nation or their community. You know, how mm-hmm. what do you suggest to people who, or even Hollywood, right? How what would you suggest to people who want to penetrate that that really competitive market? I would suggest um, who want to compete in this market is just surround yourself with all those same people as much as you can, you know, but not be eager, if that makes any sense. Hmm. Um, Just surround yourself with that environment because you're going to come upon, you know, more resources. Someone's going to introduce you or Mm -hmm. you're going to, you know, you're going to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. You're going to have your, you know, your 30-second pitch, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know. Mm -hmm. You're going to have them on or whatever you're doing and um, make sure you represent your brand, you know, to its fullest. When you are when you are approached, but be ready, always ready. 
Mm. And um, I would just say surround yourself with those same people. And if, if you can't be in, if you're somewhere and you can't be around the Hollywood mm -hmm. celebrity or the local celebrity, mm -hmm. um, try to position yourself, position mm -hmm. your, your brand or yourself to be in that position where they're calling you. Wow. Um, and that's finding out, you know, researching who they are, what they do, um, you know, your own strategy. You know how it, it took whatever, uh, how can you say this? My thing is just, just try to get exposed. Mm, okay. You get exposed as much as you can. And, and it's hard to elaborate on that because that can become, and that, that is so like vast with mm -hmm. so much information with that, mm -hmm. within that, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think, I think you, you, you really did um, sort of summarize it, right? Just at least surrounding yourself with people. If you can't be um, there, social, social media really allows for a lot of that. You know, you can, yeah. you can present your work as a sort of a walking um, portfolio, right? And yeah. people, um, I, who was I speaking to? I was speaking to another designer recently, a designer recently. And, you know, social media has allowed for, um, stylist to see, you know, her work and, 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 you know, it, it, it has afforded her opportunities that, you know, maybe, you know, a few years back you wouldn't have had. So I think that that's exactly what you said. It just, exactly. you know, if you can't surround yourself with that community, then just putting yourself out there um, on social and just being able to use the, the platforms that you are, have in front of you already. Yes. The platforms are there. It's just whatever you're striving for, look for your um, inspiration and kind of model that a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, like on social media, a lot of people, you know, are coming with, you know, pictures. But make sure your pictures is bright enough. Make mm. sure your brand is like a magazine. Make sure it's pretty. You yeah. know, maybe keep some of your personal things off of there because you don't want to confuse people. Mm -hmm. um, people are very one-dimensional right now. So you want to keep it very streamlined again and, and, and beautiful. Um, I would say even as part of that reading you know, researching Inc. Magazine, Entrepreneur Magazine, Black um, Business Magazine. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many business magazines out there right now, online and offline, um, that you can kind of help you expand your, your exposure. Hmm, that's good. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So what words of encouragement um, could you offer someone that may still, you know, have a full-time job or, you know, have less than two years of entrepreneurial experience, but they desire that for themselves. Like they look at Dion and say, wow, you know, she's doing it the way I would want to do it. And I want to learn, I want to do what she's done, but I work a full-time job because, you know, the bills are real. Right. The bills are real. They don't yep, stop the because you want to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> so what yes. advice would you give to someone who's looking to make that first step? Yeah. The advice I would give is do it do it anyway and yeah. i would say time management time management mm -hmm. happens if you got to work from nine to five okay from six or seven to nine mm -hmm. work on your project but make mm -hmm. sure you work on it every single day mm -hmm. until it becomes full time yeah that's you know and you know not here and there or some people take they bite the bullet and they just do it full time mm-hmm they do it full time, but you still have to take care of, you know, your expenses and things are coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I would say time management is a, is a key if you have a full time job. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, Dion, I, I know you've launched a new venture or you're looking to launch. I'm not sure if you have yet, but tell us about this subscription box lash service. I'm, it sounds yeah. really exciting. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. I pre-launched it, actually. We pre-launched it on Home and Family Show. Nice. Um, just two weeks ago. Wow. And, yeah, so I'm super Congrats. excited about it. You can catch it out online on homeandfamily.com, and cool. I have some links on my app as well. Oh, good. Um, but it's a subscription box for lashes, for strip lashes, beautiful, natural, to glamour, to full, luminous lashes. Okay. Um, if you can't get to me for the service. So okay. people in other cities and states. Yeah. You can subscribe to um, a box of three to four lashes with the applicator and adhesive okay. in one beautiful box um, that you can apply for morning, noon, or night. Okay. And um, each lash application will last up to 30 applications wow. for each individual lash. So we um, launched it where you can subscribe for just one month or you can do every two months. Okay. They're in that it will save you time and money from going to CVS or any other outlet to purchase lashes. You'll have it right to your front door. Wow, that's neat. Yeah. 
cool. Yeah. That's exciting. Congratulations yeah, so, on that. Thank you. So people can sign up on the website at dlashes.com. Yeah. And um, we will send out information regarding that, and we'll actually start pre-purchasing. They sign up now. They get 10% off the first month of the box. Wow. Yeah. Cool. That's Super very exciting. Is that, that something that you've always wanted to do, or you saw there's just an opportunity, like, in the marketplace for it? Yeah, it's, it's an opportunity definitely in the marketplace for it because mm-hmm. a lot of people are trying to figure out, I don't know what lash fit for me. I don't know what. So I just kind of produce something that no matter who you are, where, whatever, how shape your eyes are, yeah. um, more a mom or executive or supermodel, you can wear the lashes. Nice. And um, we put together um, – my favorite celebrity best in one box um, and also tips in the side of the box to apply the lashes. So if you're intimidated by putting strip lashes on, we made it easy for you. Cool. Very yeah. good. That's very exciting, Dion. Congrats it's on so that. It's so much fun. I'm so excited about this new one. So, again, I'm starting another venture, another new business all yeah. over again. Right. And I didn't know where to start, so I just started starting. Right, right. <laughs> I just I, to figure out how the box going to look, figure out yeah. how – what's going to be in the box, you know, that again, and I had to work through my process of, of that to make this new venture. So it's a whole nother venture of, of products um, that I'm doing besides the service um, aspect of it in my lash spa. Right. So, Neat. yeah. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. It's well, that's going to, that in itself is going to encourage someone because you're, you're always, you know, it's a start, it's a start over. You're, you're starting yeah. from the beginning again to a degree. Just start. Wow. I mean, it's, it's amazing how some people just are so afraid. They talk, talk, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. Mm-hmm. But they haven't made not one phone call, mm-hmm. make a phone call or write it on a piece of blank paper yep. of how it's going to look, yep. you know, and that little small part will encourage you and give you some kind of encouragement to like, okay, the next step is I got to do this. So whatever you think in your head, it's a gift that you have that thought. It's a Mm. gift that, you know, it's been exposed. Either way, put it on paper. So I always say, so God can see it. And so it can, you know, come alive. That's good. Come on now. Come on, preach. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Dion. Okay. So now it is time for our very, fun rapid fire round of questioning we want to get beyond all the business of it all super quick um and get to know a few random facts about you you ready oh my gosh am i okay i'm ready (laughs) (laughs) you know what's what's hilarious to me you ladies are so amazing and so accomplished but these little (laughs) rapid fire round questions always make everyone so nervous it cracks me up (laughs) Okay, okay, here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. So I'm giving you no context for this first one, but you still have to choose one of the three, okay? Okay. Money, power, or respect? And why? I would say respect. Okay. Because if I'm respected, that means I, again, go back to the phone, I can pick up the phone mm. and be respected for them to answer the phone, mm. to be respected to get the money, yeah. and respected to get the power. That's, That's my answer. Come on now. <laughs> yes. Good answer. <laughs> Just snaps on that one. Okay. Favorite meal to cook and favorite meal to eat. It could be the oh my same gosh. or different. What's it, what now? What was the last part? They could be the same or different, right? The fa- favorite meal to cook? Well... First of all, I make a mean reservation. Okay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, okay. it could be a plethora of things that I cook for my nice. mean reservation. Nice. But no, my favorite thing to cook, I would say pasta mm. and tuna. Okay. With Paul Newman's vinaigrette. It is the bomb. All okay. of you try it. Okay. Like, literally, send me a message on email. Instagram, t- whatever, just tell me that you love it because it's so good and it's healthy. You okay, know? okay. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah, a balsamic vinaigrette? Balsamic vinaigrette um, with, um, I do tuna and water. Okay. Or avocor and um, mm-hmm. just pasta, penny pasta. And you can throw in some like green olives for a kick. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's yeah. amazing. Some pepper. Okay. It's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Sounds very LA and healthy. <laughs> Is it? Yes. <laughs> Sounds very Hollywood. <laughs> I know. Nice. It's very obvious. But pasta's not because people don't have carbs here. True. So 
passes out normally. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Neat. All right. <laughs> okay, so one of these music genres has to go. Hip-hop, jazz, or R&B? One has to go? Hip-hop, mm-hmm. jazz, or R&B? Oh, I would say hip-hop. Are you from New York? <laughs> Are you really from New York? <laughs> I'm I know. Just <laughs> I'm just thinking of where I'm, where I'm at right now in my life. Yeah, yeah. But I still need my hip-hop for my working out. And right. Then, when I'm working, you know, um, uh, maybe I can change that. No, I'm kidding. Later, I'm kidding. But... I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. You're all good. I'm just kidding. Okay, here we go. Reality TV, scripted TV, or no TV? No TV. Okay. Okay. You're not yeah. a TV watcher? I am. I'm, okay. a, I'm a huge movie watcher. I go to the movies every Monday night. Get out. Really? Um, after every running my week? Hair, just every week I go to the movies. Really? Yes. And that's my, like, my massage and... Okay. And my craziness, because I'm so engulfed in my business, yeah. I need to have my own time. I work out, my mm-hmm. my thing is working out, and, you know, getting my B12 shots and going to the movies. Neat. Okay, good. <laughs> I like that. Good for you for taking care of yourself. Yeah. Okay, here's a, here's a real silly one. It's going to throw you a little bit, all right? You ready? Okay. Say okay. this. Say this three times fast. Oh, my God. Tom threw Tim three thumbtacks. Tom threw Tim three thumbtacks. Go. Tom threw Tim two three thumbtacks. <laughs> Tom threw Tim three thumbtacks. <laughs> one more, one more. Squeeze it out. All right, Tom two two two. two. Okay, I can't. <laughs> Tom three uh, two Tom. I can't. I I forgot what the rest. Perfect. Was. It's all good. I love it. I love it. That's all. That's all. I won't. I won't torture you anymore. That was it. You got through it. You did good. Oh my god. Uh, Dion, you were so great. So tell me how people can get a hold of you. Um, so you already said they can sign up for your lash service on dlashes.com. And, of course, I'll have all that information on our um, the show notes for this particular show. But what are your yeah. social media handles? Tell us more of that. Yes, my social media handles is consistently branded dlashes mm-hmm. on all platforms. Nice. So on Twitter, dlashes. Um, Instagram at D Lashes, that's D L A S H E S. Mm-hmm. LinkedIn is D Lashes by Dion Phillips. Okay. And also on Facebook is D Lashes um, as well. Nice. Um, what's another one? Snapchat is D Lashes as well, at D Lashes. And what's another one? Um, is that it? You're all, you're on, on everything. On, yeah, I'm on Timler at D Lashes. Um, and um, I think, yeah. On all social medias, I'm at D-Lashes. Wow, that's awesome. Well, Dion, I want to (laughs) extend my deepest gratitude to you for spending a bit of your very valuable time with me and the Gradient Global Collective podcast listeners. You truly exemplify the innate brilliance and moxie of black women entrepreneurs globally, and I am honored to have gotten to know you just a little bit. Oh, thank you so much for having me, and this is definitely my part of giving back to other entrepreneurs and helping you expand your brand. Thank, thank you, you for so having much. me. I appreciate it, Dion. Thanks again. <laughs> thank you. All right. <laughs> I appreciate you for listening, and if you loved this episode, like us on Facebook at Radiant Global, and share the page with your friends, too. 